Hey everybody and welcome back to my two-day Algoi adventure. Now in day one of course, and you already know this, we went to Germany's longest alpine slide and it was a ton of fun. But realistically, all of that was just in preparation for today. Because now we're going to hike to Germany's most exclusive, most beautiful and highest altitude alpine lake. Let's go check it out. For those who haven't seen my day one video, which you know, is a bit of a shame, but I'll forgive you if you watch it later, let's quickly go over how we actually got to Algoy. Well, in a channel first, I had to break up with public transportation and rent a car, as even though this is technically doable via trains and buses, man, the scheduling would have just been way too tight and stressful. Now that being said, the drive only took about two hours from Munich, so it isn't super far, but because this hike is a pretty intense all day affair, we thought it best to spend the whole weekend down here instead of rushing it. The idea being that we spend day one, you know, the video I hope you've watched, exploring the easy sights and an awesome alpine coaster before getting some well needed rest in preparation for the arduous hike day two will have in store, which of course is hiking to one of Bavaria's most beautiful alpine lakes and highest as well, Schrecksee. Which brings us neatly to talking about the specific hiking logistics, which just could not be easier. You see, the quaint valley village of Hinterstein is nestled right up to tons of mountain paths and acts as a sort of jumping off point for a plethora of hikes and bike trails in the area, including as It even has a parking lot at the end of town for all those who are just simply passing through, which is a great option, you know, if you need it. However, I booked a wonderful little hotel only five minutes down the road from the parking lot, so all I need to do in the morning is roll right out of bed and onto the trail. All right, so we've just finally gotten out of the hotel. It's about nine in the morning, which is a perfect time to start the hike. And it's absolutely beautiful this morning. And I will tell you what, it's far more comfortable having woken up here than if I'd attempted to do the drive itself going all the way from Munich. That would have been absolutely terrible. I'm never quite sure if that's the best call when I'm planning these trips. But now that I'm actually in the moment, I think I made the right one and I think you should too. But other than that, there's not much to say other than it was a good breakfast and time to start walking. As I mentioned, I was able to begin the hike by walking straight out the door, which was awesome. But the real hike, well, that doesn't begin for about another hour or so, since after strolling through the parking lot, you're greeted with meadow paths and paved roads for what, you know, feels about an hour or so. After a while, you'll reach a random electrical station, and that's where the real hike begins. Turning off the main road, you'll immediately start gaining mad elevation, which you're just gonna need to get used to because this hike has absolutely no brakes. You're either gonna get used to it, or you're gonna burn out. So don't forget to pack just an absurd amount of water. There's only one easy place to fill up, and it's before the electrical station, making it far less than helpful. And let's just say it's uh, hastefully decorated. But if you forget to pack enough water like me, well, on your return journey, it's gonna be your salvation. Other than that though, just make sure to wear sturdy shoes, grip your hiking poles, and keep pushing up the rocky forested path. It's gonna be a while, but I promise it's gonna be worth it. So we've made it. That wasn't too bad, was it? <laughs> I wish. Sadly, we're only about halfway there and this is just a reservoir. Beautiful water nonetheless, but only demarking about 50% of the journey done. The ordnance map I downloaded was in American, so I'll have to do the conversions later because I'm too tired. But we've done about 1,200 feet of elevation and two and a half miles. So like I said, 50% there. But this is a pretty good place to take a break and maybe cool off if you're willing to risk it. Anyway, I'm doing all right now, so probably just get back on the trail. 
After the absolutely brutal uphill section through the woods, you'll find yourself in a stunning valley. And I just can't overstate its beauty. Though maybe I just feel that way since this is the closest you're gonna get to flat ground on this entire hike. So savor it and the surroundings for, you know, probably a good hour or so. Taking a good rest if you need it, this is the perfect spot. Eventually, you'll come to a lovely stream and a bridge made of trunks, very whimsical. Perhaps you'll start looking around you, curious as to where the lake might be and how much more is this hike gonna ask of you? And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you see that immense cliff ahead of you, that just stone wall? Well, the only way is through and you need to get over it. So good luck. I know I needed it because the path is gonna become very, very steep and you'll regret cursing the forest section because this is way harder. The dirt trail that we've been used to is gonna be replaced entirely by loose, easy shifting gravel, a river of loose stones. And if you didn't need your shoes or poles before, <laughs> you're going to need it now. I'd love to show you more firsthand, but honestly, I just don't have a lot of footage from this section. Sorry, not sorry. I was uh, pretty busy. All right, so that's it. The whole hike, the whole valley is behind us. And it was pretty brutal to be completely honest with you. If you guys have watched any of my other videos, you know I love to hike a lot. And I recommend those hikes for almost anybody. They're pretty casual. I think most people can enjoy them, even if you're not into hiking. But this one, man, if this isn't your thing, this lake is not gonna be the lake for you, that's for sure. But if you are interested in hiking, if this is kind of a hobby and you think you would like the challenge, then this is, well, you're gonna see in a minute. It's fantastic, it's brilliant. But I'm completely shattered right now, so I'm gonna get by the lakeside, maybe cool off, have some food, take a nap. I'll see you in a few hours once that's all done. As if it were a desert mirage, Shrekzee suddenly came into view as we crested our final hill ascent of the day. But this oasis was all too real. Few places I've ever traveled to have lived up to the perfectly crafted photo spots that you see online, but this place, man, it's something else entirely. I mean, it's just better than you can imagine. An excellent place for a picnic, a nap, perhaps some local beers chilled in the icy waters, chased by a plunge in the water itself. Nah, I just cannot be overstated how great it was. And with no chance of overcrowding, you can feel free to spend hour upon tranquil hour here. That's what I did, and you'll need it too, because we have to hike back down. All right, so that's it. We've still got a pretty daunting hike ahead of us, but the real question right now is, well, was it worth all the effort? And it's really hard for me to say that it wasn't. I think that was incredibly enjoyable. Out of all the lakes we've been to, this one might be my favorite, but bias on the table, putting a lot of effort to get here, it's kind of hard not to like it, you know what I mean? But you take a look for yourself. I mean, it's just magnificent. But with that being said, I can't really hang out here that much longer. Maybe I took a nap a little bit longer than I should have. We need to get out of here before it gets too dark. So time to start the reverse journey. And I'll see you maybe when we get back to the car as like a final wrap up before the conclusion. <sighs> Look, I'm gonna be the first one to admit it. I kind of underestimated this one. <laughs> I'll meet you in the conclusion to talk about it.
Hey everybody and welcome back to Munich, sadly, now that the Algoi adventure is all over. Now of course in the day one video we talked about it kind of in a capsule, in a bubble, all on its own. Is it worth it as just that itinerary? So let's go ahead and do that for day two. How about Schrexe and the hike and all that that entailed in its own little bubble? Is it worth it? So I would recommend going to Schrexe highly. It's probably my most favorite day trip I've done since we've moved to Munich. Um, totally worth it, would recommend. Now, but the question really isn't would I recommend this? Because the answer is yes. The question is, do you have enough time? Are there enough hours in the day for you to do this based on where you live? For us, we live in Munich. It's an hour and 20 minutes, right? An hour uh, and 20? A bit longer than actually, that. Actually, yeah, longer yeah. than that. It's very, very far away. So we actually chose to sleep over, as we said before, the night before. Because it just would have been way too much to wake up early, drive all the way to Hinders and hike and drive back. So I wouldn't recommend it as a single day trip for people who live more than like 30, 40 minutes away. But if you live in the area, you probably know about it already, if you live in the area or if you are traveling through Bavaria and you think this might be a nice little, you know, day trip from where you are, I would highly recommend that. So we've talked about day one in our previous video, day two now in this video. So how do you feel about putting these together? And that's where it really comes together because I can't recommend this package enough. I went in pretty skeptical when I was making this itinerary, but this might be one of the best itineraries I've put together in quite some time. I mean, you go in down there on day one, right? None of the, I mean, all of the activities are good, but none of them are really worth you going all the way down there, right? But then on day two, it's totally worth traveling any amount to go to this lake, but you need to kind of spread it out over some more days. You need more activities. So by putting them together, you relax on day one, do some fun stuff, and then day two, roll out of bed onto the trail. You can't ask for anything better than that. It was absolutely fantastic. And this is probably also my favorite Bavarian lake, kind of like what you said, it might be your favorite too. It's that good. Yeah. So with that being said, please like, comment, subscribe, follow us on Instagram for even more Bavarian day trips. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. See you later. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, it looks like you could do some jumping, like if you go over that one. Yeah.